star and angels gave the sign. Bow to babe on bended knee. The savior of humanity. Unto us a child is born. He shall reign forevermore. No Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Good afternoon. Welcome to our four o'clock Christmas Eve service. We're happy that you're all here together and that we can join together and uh, celebrate our Savior's birth. Uh, as we begin this program today, I want to start with a word of prayer. So um, I would like to invite you to stand with all of us to pray together. And then we'll sing our first hymn together also, which is going to be, O Come All Ye Faithful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so happy to celebrate the birth of your son Jesus together. We're thankful for the love that you showed to us by sending Jesus to us, and we ask that you would bless our celebration of his birth at this, at this time of worship. 
We pray all this thing, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may remain standing, please, as we sing our first hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. For our next hymn, we'll sing all four verses of joy to the world. Nature sing and heaven and nature. 
next song we're going to sing Silent Night and sing all the verses of Silent Night. In those days, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, and we'll sing all, all the verses to it as well.
If I was there the night before And I heard them knocking at my door Would I turn them down or let them in On Christmas Eve in Bethlehem If I was watching over the field when the angel of the Lord appeared Would I believe as the shepherds did On Christmas Eve in Bethlehem Would I sing hallelujah at the top of my lungs Would I fall on my knees Would my soul be overcome Baby boy born of a virgin on Christmas Eve in Bethlehem. If I saw the star light up the sky, would I know a king was born that night? Leave it all behind to follow him. I'll sing hallelujah at the top of my lungs And I'll fall on my knees Oh, my soul is overcome In all of our Savior's birth The moment heaven came to earth As a baby boy born of a virgin On Christmas Eve in Bethlehem Before 
the earth will be restored and the son of god knocks on your door will you turn him down or let him in for the day when jesus comes again when we'll sing For the Father, Spirit, Son, His kingdom come to earth the moment heaven returns. When all believe and we will bow before Him, as the angels sing, Oh, come, let us adore Him. Just like Christmas Eve in Christmas Eve in Bethlehem. John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him need not perish but might have everlasting life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him so at the heart of this christmas message is the love of god in most world religions the people must make the sacrifices in an attempt to please their imaginary gods but the Christian faith is just the opposite. In the Christian faith, the one true God has made the sacrifice in an attempt to win the favor of the people. Can you imagine? But was it enough to win our favor? Imagine being loved like that. Imagine being loved that much. And that kind of love, when you experience it, its reality, it changes you from the inside out to love others also. So someone has humorously rewritten 1 Corinthians 13, the great love chapter, accordingly to read, If I decorate my house perfectly with lovely plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights and shiny glass bulbs, but do not show love to my family, I am just another decorator. If I slave away in the kitchen, baking dozens of Christmas cookies, preparing gourmet meals, and arranging a beautifully ordained table at mealtime, but do not show love to others, I am just any other cook. If I work at the soup kitchen, carol at the nursing home, and give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to those around me, it profits nothing. If I trim the tree with shimmering angels and crocheted snowflakes, attend a million holiday parties, and sing in the church choir, but fail to focus on Jesus Christ, my Lord, I have missed the whole point. If I only love those who love me, my heart is not changed. Love stops cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the husband or wife. Love does not envy another home that has coordinated Christmas china and table linens and an open concept and granite countertops and stainless steel appliances. Love doesn't quarrel and compete and act unbecomingly. No, love is kind and inclusive and gracious and merciful and cooperative. Love takes the high road with words and warmth and welcomes. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. As for video games, they will break. Pearl necklaces will be lost. Golf clubs will rust. Cell phones grow obsolete. But now abideth faith, hope, and love and the greatest of these is love. For God so loved the world 
That's the Christmas message. It's really that simple. It's all about love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And the lighted cross before you reminds you of the price Jesus paid to win your favor. Someone said the cross is God's plus sign in a world full of minuses. That's pretty good. This is Christmas. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So today, Jesus himself spreads his communion table before us, and Jesus himself invites all people to come and dine. It's one thing to understand that he died for you. It's another thing to realize that he lives today for your company. He wants to be your daily companion in your regular daily life. Yes, he died to forgive us, but he lives for our companionship. His body was broken, his blood poured out. The night before he was crucified, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. Likewise, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So in a moment after I pray, the music will play. You're welcome to stay and sit and pray and commune with the Lord on Christmas Eve as long as you wish. And then when you feel the moment is right, step to one of these communion areas in the room Take the bread, drink the cup, celebrate Christ, and then leave ever so quietly as others continue to do the same. Would you pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love toward us. Lord, none of us are here today because we're good. Actually, just the opposite. We're here today because you are good, because we need a Savior. None of us are good enough in and of ourselves to ever please you. You are the holy God who created us. And because we had sinned and gone astray, you left heaven as the good shepherd of our souls, took in our stead an old rugged cross, so that by your shed blood we could know the forgiveness of sins, be reconciled with holy God, be forgiven, be fit for heaven. Lord, as we come to your table again this evening, we confess to you our sins. We acknowledge our need of a Savior. And we take a good bath in the grace of God so that we can go out of here clean and new by your grace to be a brighter light in a darker world for your glory on this Christmas Eve. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and friend, and amen.